Hey everyone, it's Max with AstroVet Endeavor and Luna Replicas, and we're here with the Al Warden Corvette for another little pre-restoration work that we're doing. And what it is today is brakes, getting the calipers working a little bit, uh, just so that when we get on and off a trailer, it's safer and easier, nothing happens, we don't run into stuff. Obviously, it's really important that we're able to stop. Uh, um, I'm doing this on my own today. It's not a huge job. There are tons of kits and stuff to be able to do this. This is something that like you can be able to do at home yourself on your own car. Actually, this is kind of, you know, it's a safety thing, but if you do it right, if you follow the procedures, it's not that difficult to do. Uh, this is pretty major that we're going to take the calipers off, actually replace the hose as well. There's a hose from the caliper to the metal brake lines. Um, Hoses, calipers, we're going to do the pistons inside the calipers. There's also O-rings that connect the piston, connect uh, both halves of the calipers together. And then once we do all four, we're going to bleed the brake system, add you know more fluid as we're bleeding them. And hopefully we'll have working brakes that last more than about a day from bleeding them. Um, the Every caliper has four pistons in it, and those pistons clamp down on the brake pads, which clamp down on the rotor. Obviously, that's what stops the car. So the seals for those pistons uh, will go. And even when they were new, they, had, they were prone to weeping a little bit. Um, but now, especially with possibly 50-year-old rubber, it's going to leak even more. So um, working on that today make this a little bit safer and easier to get around and uh, stuff like that we're doing before restoration just to make the car a little bit safer to move around so that no further damage happens um, and what i'm doing today is a rebuild of original equipment so it's part of sort of making sure that we're not causing any more damage and um, that you know it obviously the car is safe to go so come with me we're going to jack the car up we're going to take this wheel off and then uh take the caliper off and then we'll go to the bench and we'll rebuild the caliper all right so the first step here is going to be taking off the hubcap um, i always wear eye pro i usually wear a headlamp because it helps uh, keep my hands free when i'm working on a car um, try and wear long sleeves sometimes if I'm working on the car, but it's really hot today. Pants, obviously, sturdy shoes. And most importantly, if I can find them, well, a pair of gloves. Let me go get my gloves. Be right back. I put that. Beautiful. Original hubcap. Okay. And cobwebs and stuff here. It's in really good shape though. Um, Alright, before we jack the car up, I'm going to loosen these up, just break the bolts with a lug nut wrench. And then uh, we'll go from there. I think these are three quarter inch. Yep. Oh, they're already loose. A previous owner had told me they've been bleeding the brakes every couple of days just to move it around. So they'd have something. So we'll get those loosened up. All right, this is where the flashlight comes in play. If I had knee pads, it would be very helpful. Oh. Okay. All right. Go. 
right on the frame rail. Now I have a jack stand over here because you never want to leave a car on the piston on the floor jack because the piston could go obviously. And with something like this, you never know what I might be underneath it. Something might be in the way here and it would cause damage. Jack stand's not gonna move. Let's go. Oh. That's just the piece of wood. There's a piece of wood that is bracing the floor jack from touching the, uh, the, the frame rail directly. Everything's looking good. Okay. Let's keep going. Not off the ground yet. All right, well, we're off the ground, but not quite high enough for the floor jack. And I'm just a little bit nervous about putting the floor jack under the car. I don't want to jack it up high enough for that, honestly, right now. So let's move this away. We will leave it on the floor jack for now. Just for now, because we're not going to have this off the car for very long. You know what, no. I have to break a couple bolts under here. I do want to put it on the floor jack no matter what. So let's bring it up just a little bit higher. All right, see I'm being very careful about placement of the jack while I'm pulling the piston up because if it falls I don't want the jack to damage the car in any way well we got a benefit the back is coming up too we'll wind up doing both and there we go okay so now we're going to back the jack down a little bit there's a rubber pad on the floor jack, the top of the floor jack. All right, real slow. And there we go. On the jack. Okay. Um, I'll leave this here as a backup. Then there's this fuel line. Let's get that out of the way. That's it. Let's zip tie that up somewhere. All right. We're gonna leave the floor jack on there just as a backup. It's loose, but it's pressurized just in case, but I don't think that's going anywhere. Okay. Taking the front wheel off. All right, front wheels coming off. Trusty Milwaukee impact wrench. Let's 
Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah. Oh. Anybody want a locust? Jeez. The rotor is actually not in bad shape. But we'll clean that all up. Here's the caliper. And we actually have to loosen up two of these nuts while it's on here, just easier to break them here. And then, of course, the two bolts that hold the caliper on, and then the hose itself. So, let's get started. Now, all right, we're gonna break this bolt that's holding the two halves together. There's two of those, and then there's two nuts that hold the caliper onto the car. So we're gonna do that first. We'll break these two. Let's see. Come on. Oh. I think we're gonna need heavier artillery. Come on. No, it does not want to go. <clears throat> All right, well, we might, might have to soak that for a little bit. Uh, if it will go at all. <clears throat> Not looking good. Okay. Well, there is a plan B to this, and that is replacing the calipers for now while these get rebuilt or we find date coded originals that can go in here these look like new pads and a new cotter pin and everything and these are new someone has been in here this is a new sway bar Huh. Interesting. All right, we're going to plan B, which is I take the brake line off here and then take these off, take the caliper off and take the two halves apart on the bench. Plan B for bench. Ooh, it doesn't brake line doesn't want to come off now. Might have to start tapping on this. All right, let's try the five eighths. Brought the persuader. That's it. All right. Caliper is going to be off in a second. Let's see if I can get the brake line off over here. If not, I can get it at the hard line over here. Again, the persuader. There we go. That's it. Got to be careful with some of these. These are not the strongest fittings in the world. But you know what? I'm going to actually have to take it off over there anyway. Okay. Pull the clip out. Here we go. See what's going on here. 
taking the clip off right there. We're going to take the hard line off of the soft line that goes to the caliper. And then, see the caliper's already loose. We'll just pull that right off. These things weigh about 20 pounds. So let's, uh, let's do that. I'll come right back. So just a reminder, brake fluid absolutely loves to eat paint and these things will be filled even if they're leaking, there's going to be brake fluid coming out of these. So wear some rubber gloves and keep it away from paint or anything you really particularly care about. Okay, so that's now free. I got the hose off. The hose is completely brittle. So anytime you're doing these and it's been a while, make sure you replace the rubber parts because they will go. And that's that. Oh, that's dripping. There we go. You got your pads and the rotors here. The rotors in okay shape. We're going to clean this all up just so that there's a good breaking surface on here. If there's any, there's been any fluid or anything on here, we're going to get rid of it. All right, to the bench. All right, we're on a bench now. Don't mind the mess. We got a big cotter pin over here. Let's just go ahead and pin out. pin here and here are our two pads Oof. We'll clean these all up and oh yeah yeah there's a lot of stuff on that so even if they were working they've got a lot of grease on them and stuff but I, I think the pistons are seized these uh, outer ones are okay the inner ones yeah no bueno all right, so the next step, let's soak these bolts a little bit because they do push through to the other side. I think they're just seized up at the top there. And then we'll chuck it up into the, into the old vise here and see if we can pull these two halves apart because there is a, there is a O-ring between the two halves that needs to be replaced. So I do have to take these apart. Oof. Uh, I did this a little bit off camera, but I wanted to give a huge shout out to Milwaukee's impact driver, um, quarter inch impact, or I'm sorry, yeah, three eighths inch impact driver, because these were not coming undone. And a little bit of uh, deep creep and came straight out. That's a lot of torque. And you need that hammer force with the with the torque with a impact gun because that's what brings these apart. All right, so these are apart. The piston halves are apart. You can see where the O-ring is between the two pistons. These definitely need to be cleaned up a bit, uh, which is what brake clean is for. Fancy that. Um, these have to come out. These uh, pistons, and then there are springs beneath them, and we use actually a piston puller just like this it just hooks in underneath right there it should be able to pop right up oh. gotta hook it That's one. And you see, here's the piston, and there's a spring and a lower seal inside there. That's the main seal that goes. And you can see there's tons of crud in here. Again, watch your paint. 
Don't want this anywhere near anything you care about. And that's 50 years of crud right in there. We're going to blow these out with the deep creep brake clean. So we can toss these. These are getting completely replaced in the kit. And I'm going to make sure these channels and stuff are clear in here. Let's get the next one and then we'll come right back. Hook it. There we go. And that's it. All right. Oof. That one's a little special. Oh boy. Oh boy. I don't know what that is. Front pistons are larger than the rear pistons. Obviously, uh, the, your front brakes do most of the work uh, when you're braking. So there's more braking. They, you know, these are designed so there's more braking force up front, so you have larger pistons. Modern brakes usually have one piston on one side, and then the caliper kind of clams onto itself uh, from, you know, pushes against the brake pad on the one side and then the other side mechanically moves towards it. So it's getting force on both sides with two brake pads, but there's only one piston. Sometimes there's two piston. In this case, there's four. So you have four clamping down on both sides, theoretically evenly. Ugh. Okay, yeah, these springs are shot. And obviously the piston's shot. All right, I'm gonna clean these up and I'll be back a little bit later. We're back in the shop here. It has been a little bit while. I uh, had some family stuff going on today. But we are going to take a look at the progress here. These have been cleaned out for the most part, these piston chambers. Um, they're pretty smooth on the inside. I think these are perfectly salvageable and usable. So we're going to go from there. Next is taking the kit out and starting to put the new pistons in. And then the O-ring gaskets and then torquing the halves, the two halves back together. And they do need to sit together real tight. Actually, the torque spec on these is 130 foot pounds. So we're going to do that over here on the vise. Let's see what we got here from this kit. This is from C3 Corvette. go some hoses in there Ooh, nice and shiny uh, these look like the rear ones they're a little bit smaller Put those there uh, yep here are the front pistons let's take one out okay Got hoses and clips right there. New hoses and clips for the front. We're going to do those too. All right, so these go in this way and they get the spring on the bottom here. They get the cup and then there is a sealed cup that goes on top as well. So let's pull out the springs and rubber parts. There's all four springs. There's some rubber. Okay, gotta be careful the O-rings are in there too. Just do a test fit so we want the flange to be opening downwards obviously as the piston moves up and down like this these go in like this Out. 
handy to have a pick around for this kind of thing. So we're going to just stuff it in there. There we go. Just like that, like a bell. The spring goes on the bottom like this. I don't know if these are tapered anyway. I don't believe so. So either way, it should still work. So now the tricky part here is actually getting that bell, the flange here, to go down into the lip of the, you know, that it needs to have the cup needs to be going downwards all the way around inside this chamber. And what works really well for that is you can use a screwdriver, but sometimes the screwdriver can get nicked on this and then it um, tears the gasket or tears the, the piston rubber. So a uh, spudger, something like this, like a plastic spudger for working on computers and stuff, that's actually, that, that it's very helpful. Um, you can use the pick too and just kind of get the point in and, and move it around. But we're going to try that right now. Some guys use a credit card or something like that, but... We're just all the way around, slowly. Using the corner of this plastic tool. And we're in. Now that should move pretty freely inside there. Obviously with uh, once there's um, brake fluid in there, it should move a little bit easier. Some guys put a little bit of grit brake fluid in there while they're assembling because it helps get everything moving. Uh, it's a little messy and they'll be filled with brake fluid in no time. So doing it dry. All right. Now the second part of this is the top gasket that goes this way all right cup up and we want to drive this in with if you don't have a gasket tool see if you just have a really large socket in this case i'm going to use this socket which is a one and three quarter inch, you go a little bit smaller than that. But there are also tools to, to drive these down um, or you could tap it around the, the edge, but this works too. Let me do that real quick, set the these four and then we're gold. Uh, see if we can put these back into the car. Um, new hose new bleeder valve also comes in this kit and of course the new o-rings um, i'll come back and we'll torque these two halves together all right see you in a minute so the new pistons went in the calipers really well um, they got some nice spring to them much better action than what was in there originally now we have to make the two halves together really really important don't forget this O-ring right here. There's two O-rings that go on the one side. Then you put them both together. And then we're going to torque the bolts down. 130 foot-pounds of torque. We'll do that right now. So first O-ring. Let's just... Second O ring. Okay. these threads and start these threads okay 
and it is a 13 16 inch socket. Double check, 130 foot pounds of torque. Okay. Super important that these are torqued down all the way. That's 130 pounds. Getting there. That's 130 pounds. All right. Next step here, we're gonna take out the old, take out the old bleeder screw. Kit comes with a new bleeder screw. I'll we'll save that. Never know when you're gonna need another bleeder screw. Put that in the break box. This might be metric, but 516 seems to work. All right, just make sure that's free because you're going to have to open and close it to bleed it. And don't, don't torque it down too much. You know, it just wants to seat it for now. All right. The hose is now hooked up. Uh, don't forget the crush washer down there. There's a copper crush washer. This is all ready to go. There's a clip, and then we're going to thread the hard line onto it. But easy as... Just dropping this over here, lining up the holes, letting it sit there for just a second. Okay. Put the rubber, rough that in, just to make sure it goes. All right. Then we have these bolts here, and they are five eighths of an inch. Just thread these in. Just make sure they're cleaned up and everything. Let's see. And then these get torqued to 30 pounds. So after all of this, it turns out that the rotors were shot anyway. They had been overcut. Um, there wasn't enough meat left on the rotors to be able to use them. The brake calipers that we were that were on the car are not historic to the car. They're from a later version of the Corvette. And uh, this was kind of all for nothing, but it serves as a great uh, explanation of how to rebuild original Corvette calibers from this from this era. So I hope you guys learned something. Maybe it was somewhat informational, um, kind of a waste of time for me, but it such is life in vehicle restorations. And we'll be back with the second part of this where we put the new brakes and rotors onto the car. Thanks, everybody. Check out the next videos coming soon.